Alright, good day everyone, Steve Briggs here. So today's video will be based on Android Studio, but most critical, running Android Studio on a system that has an AMD CPU. There are a lot of blogs and videos out there showing you how to set up this studio on a system that has an Intel CPU and get that functionality. But there have been a lot of hiccups in terms of the Android Studio on an AMD system, a system with an AMD CPU. So, I've looked at a few videos on have, that have brought me to this point to, recti to help rectify the problem with the AMD CPU. So basically, after you do your installation and stuff, you click start a new project. But before we go there, just want to show to verify my system is on AMD CPU. I'm running at 6 gigs. Um, I have like 4.96 usable. Which you can see is like about 5 gigs. The video card actually takes the 1 gig because it's on, um, on board. So, here now we click start a new project, Android project. Uh, but here you name your application. Now, as you can see before, I have like about 6 applications to the left there. That is a lot of um, stuff I was trying out. So, in terms of Android, I will name mine um, Android. Lenovo. Okay, I'll name my I'll name my application Android Lenovo. You could name yours whatever you like. The company domain leave that as it is for now. Um, the project location basically here is the default save site, which will be here, Studio Projects, the C drive up to Studio Projects. If you want to change it, you click this box here or you press Shift and Enter, and it will you can select where you want to um, save your project for now just work with the application name click next now when you come to this point here we are dealing with the apis in terms of the different versions of android now with here we actually have the apis from the first android which was 1.0 and what they were stating at the bottom here is that the lower the api is in more compatibility with devices but you will have less features that can be built upon this level of api so with for with this say you now we will work with the KitKat the 4.4. Now there are two versions of KitKat. We will see the other version later on in this. Just to um touch on this here too, the where uh from reading on blogs and stuff, what this feature is for is for like if you want to build an app for watch, watches that support the Android based operating system. There's also TV, the Android Auto. I don't have um any knowledge on this but for now you'll just highlight phone and tablet and select the android api 19 kitkat version finish you click next here now there are the different activities that you can do so for us we will make sure it is highlighted as blank activity and we click next the activity name i will name it android activity lenovo you can name it whatever you like because trust me i've been doing this a while um you can't use dashes here. Underscore. You can use the underscore. Alright. Um, I'll name my Android Activity 19. See now that I'm using the API 19. Or I will name it Android. I'll leave it as it is. I was going to name it Android API 19, but I'll leave it as it is. Click finish. When you are done, you don't have to worry about these things. You just click finish. Let's make sure you have a good um activity name. And here now it will create the project. Now it takes a little while and stuff. As you can see, it's building the um the project. Now Android Studio it takes up memory. When I read up on the system requirements, they said the minimum was two gigs. But in terms of when I run this application, I have six gigs, well five gigs usable. And when I'm running this app, my system come sometimes it reaches down to at least one gig free memory. So you know for a fact that this app could be pulling at least 3.8 gigs or whatever the case may be and whatever apps any other apps running in the back may take about a uh, hundred megabytes or so but not to stray here we have now this is the actual project that we built the lenovo the android lenovo whatever name you had you will see it here this part here is very critical to the operation and the running of the android to actually run your app what you do you click tools and you go to the android you click android 
Well, you don't have to click it. Just scroll to Android, and then you go to the SDK Manager, System Development Kit. Here, you will see the different APIs. You will see Marshmallow, Lollipop, KitKat. The others will load, but these are the older ones, like Frio and Gingerbread, and you have Ice Cream. But I will be working with KitKat. KitKat is already installed on my system. So for starters, I'm just going to highlight Jelly Bean as in terms of what to do, in terms of what it is you will go about doing. So you select here with anyone that you feel you want to work with. You will see this little box in the corner here, the left hand side, which is an indication that will that that this file, once you click apply, it is going to install. Now, what you have to do here now is go to System Package Details. Because if you just click on um, Apply, what will happen? It will just install the platform and you will not install the system image. So you go to System Package Details and you look for the one that you selected. So you selected Jelly Bean. And with Jelly Bean, because you can see there's the Android 4.3.4. 4 so basically that is the platform the critical thing here now are these two images the ones that mark arm those are the ones that will run on a system a host machine that have an amd cpu if you have an intel a system with an intel cpu you will have to select the intel the x86 atom system image if you mix them up what will happen is that when you run the the md the, the project when you run your emulated device you're gonna get an error so with this here now you can indicate well this jelly bean platform you will install you select the image that you want and when you finish you click apply and from there you support and you click ok you will get into that part where you will download now you must have an internet connection make sure it's have um, at least two megabits so you can download it or if you run it dial up um it will take a very long time but not to stray so as i said you select which platform you want and are based on the amd this video is really based on the amd system you select the arm now let me just rectify something also when you go to higher platforms you're going to see the same intel atom 86 and then you're going to see the arm but it's going to be in a such a format it may look confusing but it's the same thing let me see if I can find it here. All right, look at here. So the the kick card, the 4.4, you will see the ARM EABI dash V7A. Basically, what this is stating that this is for the AMD systems. Okay, there's the Intel Atom, but you select the one that is with the ARM. You see, there's also the kick card where that I spoke about the other version. When you are finished doing all of that and you install and you set up, you will just click finish. And that everything you will just see the option to click finish it will be a little blue knob and when you finish now you click tools you go back to android and you click the avd manager with the avd manager well this is one of the devices i will i will delete this you're cre you're creating a virtual device now so you select create the virtual device by default it should be nexus 5 leave it as default what you're going to click next is clone device after you click clone device you type in the name of the device that you want so i will name mine android no mine will be nexus 5 lenovo although lenovo is the brand of a laptop not too sure if they made tablets but not to stray when you're finishing now you select the, the, the amount of ram now, if your system is 3 gigs of RAM and you set this to 3 gigs, you're going to get some problems. If you set this to 300, 3000 megabytes, which is equivalent to about a gig and a little bit on that gig, you're going to get some problems. So what I say is that if you know your system memory, set it lower. For me, I will set this to 1 gig of RAM because this is actually what the host machine is using. Okay, the amount of physical RAM on the device. So, you can leave these things as they are and click OK. So, when you are finished now, you look for the device that you have created by the name. 
So as my own was um, Nexus 5 Lenovo, when you found the device, you click Next. From here, you're going to see the different system images that you have you have installed, the, 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 the system images based on the platforms that you have installed. So for instance, the KitKat, I installed the ARM EABI-5. V7A system image that was based on the KitKat API platform, API 19 platform. The Marshmallow, the initial one I had was based on Intel. This x86 is based on Intel and this is why I was getting problems. You are going to select one with the ARM. I am going to use Gingerbread, which is an older version. But for, okay, I wouldn't use Gingerbread, I'm going to use the KitKat because the KitKat is what we have been using from the inception. Select the KitKat and you can click next. If it is you want to change your system's um, image, you can click show downloadable images and they will tell you, they will show you. So for Marshmallow, you can actually download the ARM. For Marshmallow, you can download the x86. For Lollipop, you can download the x86. I have the ARM installed already and so down, okay? What I have, as I said, I'm selecting KitKat and click next. Here you now, you have the different um, the AVD names and you have auto. Well, leave that as auto, that is the scale size and stuff. Advanced settings, leave that, as, don't go into that, leave that as it is. And you click finish. So it will mark saving AVD. It shouldn't take long. Once you have a proper running system, it shouldn't take long. While I is running, they are just going to pull up this app here now. That is just to show my system. It's a from Pyroform. It gives you a rundown of your entire system. So, in different CPUs, in the summary, it will tell you about the temperature of your CPU, um, your video card, hard drive temperature, and all other stuff. Let me see if this is upright. So let's minimize in this here. Coming back to the Android Studio. But this here, what you can do, you can double click on it to actually run the app one time to start the entire emulation up. Or what you can do, you could click this here, this arrow here, which indicates run app. You give it some time. As you will see, it mark good um, Gradle build running. And based on your system's performance, it will run quicker. Now with AMD systems, you tend to get a slower performance, whereas with Intel, you get that quicker acceleration on stuff. AMD naturally, and AMD CPUs, they naturally run a little slower in terms of Intel. But those two have been going at each other from the beginning of time. Even before I knew myself, Intel and AMD was around. But while I is loading, I'll just go back to this app here, the Pyroform. Here with this, you can see all different stuff. The graphics card it will tell you the um, sizing, the width, the hoods. If you go to the RAM, it will tell you how much available physical memory you have. Um, and it will tell you the percentage. So as we, I'll just close back this now because I see this highlighted. Right. So remember the app, the device that you created, the virtual device, you're supposed to see it here. What you do is that once you select it, even if you click here, you, you're going to go back to this point and you could create a new virtual device. You close this and you click OK. So it will mark rendering. Once this comes up green, you shouldn't have no problems after. You just have to wait a few minutes or according to your system's CPU speed, you just have to wait some seconds. With my own, like a minute or two before the app comes up. What will happen is that you'll see the phone itself, a replication of the phone on the screen. Now, the phone itself, when it loads, the, when the entire um, Android operating system loads, you're going to get to click on the screen like it's a real phone, browse the phone and stuff. But for now, I'll just pause the video until that comes up. Alright, so as it is, you know, as I said, the, the device loading. Uh, this part here, it takes a little while. 
takes um, last time when, when I run this device um, it take like about 12 to 15 minutes but it's based on your system's performance and stuff once it loads you're gonna once, once it loads, you're gonna see that it come up like a normal Android phone um, you select you go through and stuff initially what's supposed to happen here is that as I zoom in here you're supposed to see this here hello world okay and as you can see the, the name of the um the main activity which was the Android Lenovo um it actually have the time it's supposed to give you the time wireless connection battery and all sorts of stuff but basically this I have done here is just to make sure that this could run the emulation can run for those with the Intel um CPU what I've seen persons done in terms of setting up stuff the SDK manager and then you have the tools and then there's this Intel X um, emulator installer I install this thing and it's like 3 gigs it took me a while before it can download and install so for the entire persons you will have to install this and there's, an, there's also another folder um, let's see if I could find that folder where it, there's a, 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 a software that came with the Android Studio that you will have to install. Let me see, Steve Jr. Okay, let's see if it is in here. No, it's not here. But it is in one of those folders. Now, if you go on those, Google it and go on those online blog, you'll have a lot of procedures and steps telling you what to do and how to do it. So, you just follow.